Hey, 42 here. You can find some truly weird and wonderful things in the Guinness Book of Records. Jian Zia has the longest eyelashes in the world, Nick Sturberl has the longest tongue, and Shridhar Chilal holds the, frankly, disgusting record for the longest fingernails on a single hand. Ram Singh Chauhan has the longest moustache, Mehmet Ozurek has the biggest nose, and the one you've all been waiting for, a man called Akira Yokakura, is the proud owner of the world's most gigantic cock, Roach. Wait, what did you think I was going to say? In case you're interested, this girthy cockroach is 10 centimeters long with a 20 centimeter wingspan, and it can be found preserved in Mr. Yakagora's private collection in Yamagata, Japan. Coincidentally, considering the context in which I brought it up, the world's biggest cockroach belongs to the species Megaloblata longipenis. Sometimes these things are just meant to be. As incredible as all these things are, in my opinion, one record in that venerable book of Guinness stands head and shoulders above the rest, in more ways than one. The record I'm referring to belongs to an unassuming man by the name of Robert Pershing Wadlow, who was born in Alton, Illinois in 1918. He was, quite simply, the tallest human being ever to have lived. There are several things that make this record so remarkable. First, it was set almost 100 years ago, when the average height for an American male was under 5 foot 7, around 3 inches shorter than it is today. Second, considering the sample size we're talking about, literally billions upon billions of people throughout history, Wadlow holds this record by a surprising distance. He was more than two clear inches taller than the second tallest person ever, another American by the name of John Rogan. The final reason Wadlow's record is so amazing is simple. There's a very good chance it will never be broken, but more on that at the end of the video. The tallest person amongst the almost 8 billion human beings on planet Earth today is a Turkish man by the name of Sultan Kozun. When you think about it, it's quite a feat to be the tallest person alive, we live in an era when there are more people than ever before, and when the average adult is taller than at any point in history. But here's the crazy thing. Sultan Cousin, tallest man on Earth, is more than eight inches shorter than Robert Wadlow was when he died. There are estimated to be somewhere in the region of 2,800 seven-footers alive today. One of those is Shaquille O'Neal, arguably the most physically imposing basketball player the NBA has ever seen. Here he is standing next to full-grown adult man Kevin Hart. This, on the other hand, is Shaq standing next to a life-size statue of the tallest man in history. Yeah, I make that about nipple height. Next to a man mountain like Shaq, Wadlow still looks huge. Next to human-sized humans? He hardly looks real. At first glance, this looks like a picture of a man standing in the middle of a group of children. But no, that's just Robert hanging out with his family. The man on the end is his dad. He's just under six feet, which was considered relatively tall for the era. The funny thing is, Robert came into this world a perfectly normal-sized baby. Not that he stayed that way for long. In the first six months of his life, he grew at a rate of more than two inches per month. By the time he was half a year old, he was about the size of your average two-year-old. And when he took his first steps a month before his first birthday, he found himself eye to eye with the local five-year-olds. To say Robert was an unusual looking child doesn't really do him justice. There might not have ever been a kid quite like him. By the time he turned four, he was taller than the average adult woman of the day, and by six, he was about the size of your average man. When he started first grade, he was comfortably taller than his teacher. Robert continued to grow at an almost unbelievable rate throughout his childhood, topping six feet by the age of eight, and seven feet by the age of 12. By this point, Robert's family had started to realize their son wasn't just a big, strong lad who ate all his greens, 
he was genuinely abnormal. And so they took him to the local hospital for a checkup, which was when they found out what was really causing him to grow so fast. Astonishingly high levels of human growth hormone cursing through his body due to an enlarged pituitary gland. There was nothing that could be done about the condition. The pituitary gland is inconveniently located at the base of the brain, meaning accessing it is a dangerous business. Robert's doctors didn't dare to operate for fear of killing him outright. As he approached his teenage years, Robert had grown so outlandishly tall that he was becoming something of a minor celebrity. At 12, he met heavyweight boxing champion Primo Canera. Standing at 6 feet 6 inches tall, Canera was an absolute giant in his day. Nicknamed the Ambling Alp, he still holds the record for the most wins by knockout of any heavyweight champion in history. Carnera had spent his entire life being the bigger man, not just in the ring, but basically everywhere. Except when he met the boy, the papers had started calling the Alton Giant. 12-year-old Robert Wadlow made quite the impression on Carnera, who described him as the biggest human being he'd ever seen. That was no doubt true, but little did the ambling Alp know that Robert still had another two feet of growing to do. At 15 years of age, Robert was 7 foot 10. That's a good three inches taller than Gorge Morrison, the tallest man to ever play in the NBA. And by the time he graduated from high school at 17, he stood a frankly ridiculous 8 foot 3 inches tall and his remarkable growth was showing no signs of abating. Robert was a bright guy, but despite having left school with good grades, he found himself facing something of a problem. Growing up, he'd harboured ambitions of becoming a lawyer, but eventually he had to accept the fact that he was simply too big for his chosen career. That might sound ridiculous. Jobs don't come with theme park ride-style height restrictions, but Robert was so tall, the normal rules of life simply didn't apply to him. If you're able-bodied and of a fairly standard height, you probably take the ease at which you navigate the world each day for granted. But for extremely tall people, things aren't always so straightforward. Anyone over six feet six will learn pretty early on to stoop a little lower when approaching the average doorframe to Ouch. avoid banging their head. To Robert, the average doorframe hardly got past his navel, and he was taller than most ceilings. Working at a standard desk was just out of the question, and almost all the items you need to work in a 1930s office job, pens and pencils, a typewriter, a pretty young secretary to have an affair with, were all too small for his hands, which incidentally were the longest ever measured. He even had to invent a new crab-like technique for walking upstairs because his feet, also the longest in history, were too big to fit on the steps. Even something as simple as using the toilet was incredibly difficult. If you ascribe to the theory that the average bloke has pretty shoddy aim when it comes to answering the call of nature, just imagine how much worse it would be if we all went to the loo standing halfway up a ladder. In the end, Robert had little choice but to accept that a regular job just wasn't an option. Still, there was one career path that was always going to welcome him with open arms and painfully craned necks. The circus. The world-famous Ringling Brothers came calling in 1936 when Robert was just 18. And they were both pleasantly surprised and absolutely delighted when the world's tallest man politely accepted their offer. Whilst on the face of it, joining the circus might seem like a somewhat degrading thing to do for a bright young man with no actual circus skills, Robert never saw it that way. He somehow managed to keep the whole thing pretty low-key. He always wore his own clothes, flatly refusing all attempts to get him into a giant top hat and tails, and he only ever appeared in the centre ring, never the sideshow. The circus, along with Robert's work as an ambassador for the International Shoe Company that made his custom size 37 AA shoes, gave Robert the chance to travel around the country. From the back of the family car, which his father had customised to accommodate him, 
The Olsen Giants toured 41 states and about 800 towns and cities in the space of just a few years. Despite his incredible height, Robert flatly refused to use a wheelchair at any point in his life, choosing instead to support his overtaxed legs with a set of metal braces. It was an admirable decision. Using a wheelchair would have made Robert's life easier in a lot of ways, but eventually it came back to bite him, literally. One of the many downsides of being as big as Robert Wadlow is that you tend to lose feeling in your feet and legs. And so when Robert's leg brace started to rub against his ankle one day in the summer of 1940, he didn't even notice, allowing the abrasion to develop into a blister. Before he even knew there was a problem, the blister had become infected and Robert was seriously ill. Antibiotics weren't widely available at the time, and so Robert was rushed to hospital and given a blood transfusion, but it was already too late. He died in his sleep nine days later. It was a desperately sad and sudden end to a life that was far too short. The universe really does have a sick sense of irony. As luck would have it, 18 days before Robert passed away, his height was officially measured by doctors. And it's this number that's considered to be the world record today. Just before his death, Robert Wadlow stood almost nine feet tall. It's a figure so unreal, it probably wouldn't even be believed today if there weren't so many surviving photos to back it up. There's something undeniably fascinating about a human being that large. And it seems that fascination didn't wear off with Robert's death. More than 40,000 people came to pay their respects at his funeral, where certain modifications had to be made to allow things to proceed as normal. Well, as normal as possible when laying a literal giant to rest. Robert was buried in a custom-made 10-foot coffin that was so long it hung out the back of the hearse. It was heavy too. Robert was a trim man throughout his life, but even a fairly skinny, almost nine-footer, is going to weigh a bit. He was comfortably over 30 stone when he died, almost 450 pounds, and it took 18 pallbearers to carry him, three times the usual number. I mentioned at the start of this video that Robert Wadlow's record as the tallest human being ever to live will probably never be broken. But that isn't because he attains the maximum height our species can reach, although it's thought he was probably pretty close to what is physically possible based on our physiology. No. The reason the record will probably never be broken is that no one will ever be allowed to grow so tall again. There are several conditions that cause people to grow abnormally large, but these days all of them are treatable to some degree or another. Take the world's current tallest man, for example. Sultan's incredible growth was caused by a tumour in his pituitary gland. In 2010, he underwent successful surgery to remove it, halting his growth almost overnight. You might think sooner or later someone with gigantism will come along and actively try to beat the record by refusing surgery. Yeah, it's possible, but pretty unlikely. Human beings just aren't designed to get as big as Robert Wadlow was. Pretty much everyone who suffers from gigantism dies young, usually due to some form of heart failure from the strain of trying to pump blood around such an enormous body. Refusing treatment could potentially give someone a chance of topping Wadlow's record one day, but it would also be a death sentence. Not to mention the fact that being nine feet tall isn't exactly something most people aspire to. If we take disease out of the equation, it's almost inconceivable that anyone will ever reach the nine-foot mark. The tallest person to ever live who didn't suffer from some form of gigantism is thought to be a Scottish-born Canadian man by the name of Angus McCaskill. At seven foot nine, he was truly massive, but still comfortably over a foot shorter than the Olsen giant. Robert Wadlow didn't live a long life, but it's unlikely he will ever be forgotten. Today, more than a hundred years after his birth, the pictures and videos that survive of him are just as flat-out ridiculous as they ever were. In many of the pictures I've shown you in this video, 
Robert was well short of his full height of 8 feet 11 inches, and he still looks photoshopped. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter whether or not the record will ever be broken. Robert Wadlow stood 8 feet 11 inches tall. Even if our descendants are destined to be genetically modified 20 foot demigods, that will always be a truly remarkable thing. Thanks for watching.